hey guys hope you are doing well in today's video uh, we are going to demonstrate on the audio codes so what uh, we are going to do in this video is uh, we are trying to integrate uh, the call manager uh, cluster with audio codes so uh, in a normal scenario you can uh, if let's say if you want to route inter cluster calls you can either create like uh, h323 trunks or maybe sip trunks from uh, these clusters or maybe you can have an SME to point out all the calls to be sent to and SME will take care of your call routing to another cluster. So this is how we normally create uh, but in today's video what we are going to do is we are going to leverage audio audio codes uh, to be you know acting as an SME and audio codes will be routing the calls from cluster E to cluster B and cluster C. Um, as per the you know desired destination uh, call routing. So let's say in this scenario, right, in a normal scenario, assuming you have a SBC uh, or SME in place, right, let's assume this, this is a call manager SME here. So uh, in a normal scenario, what you would be doing is uh, for any calls that is destination destined to call manager B and C, you are going to send it to uh, SME and SME will take care of your call routing. Likewise, you'll be pointing the same route patterns to uh, for the destination E and C towards SME and uh, SME will take care of your call routing. So likewise, we are going to leverage here audio codes as an SBC. Um, so which, you know, will take care of the call routing uh, from this cluster. So uh, all the calls will be default sent to uh, um, audio codes and audio codes will do the call routing. So ideally, audio, audio codes can be used in one most scenario is like, uh, let's say if you have a service provider, um, uh, for example, and the service provider is providing you uh, the SIP trunks uh, to route PSTN calls, right? So in that case, you may have multiple trunks created uh, towards a service provider and audio, also your call managers, right? And then what you can do is you can route the calls from your call manager to the service provider and then service provider will route the call uh, to uh, from a different interface. So uh, again, the incoming call will be same like uh, incoming call. All the calls will be coming to the uh, from the service provider to audio codes and then audio codes will see which destination uh, the call is for and it will send the call according to the uh, you know destination pattern. And also, let's say if you want to integrate uh, this audio codes with uh, MS Teams. Now, in order to uh, do that, like uh, you may have uh, one set of users who are in Teams and one set of users uh, who are in uh, Call Manager, and you want the call routing to be, you know, working between uh, the Teams and the Call Manager, right? So in that case, you can have two interfaces. One is LAN and the WAN, and from the LAN interface, which is residing in your internal network, uh, where you have connectivity towards your Call Manager and you are going to send uh, all the calls from your LAN interface to the WAN interface and the WAN interface will be uh, you know taking care of the WAN calls which is a destination towards the uh, MS Teams so likewise any calls coming from MS Teams uh, you uh, receive on the WAN side and you direct it on the LAN side as per the destination pattern and also you know uh, you can uh, sometimes in like uh, when you are using direct routing right in that case let's say you have a service provider uh, who is providing the PSTN connectivity, right? That uh, PSTN connectivity may be terminated on your audio codes and audio codes will do the routing to the uh, service provider over the PSTN network. So any calls coming free, coming in from the WAN network, uh, audio codes will take care of the PSTN calls like by routing the calls to the service provider by uh, making in uh, outbound or incoming calls from the service uh, audio codes device. So before we begin, uh, let me tell you, like, uh, I'm not an expert in audio codes. I'm still learning this product. So this is uh, the demonstration. What I'm going to show you is based on my understanding, based on my experience in the lab. And um, I may be uh, incorrect at uh, some point, probably. Uh, you can feel free to, you know, write your comments and uh, correct me wherever you see that I have done some mistake. Because uh, this is something that I have learned uh, from my own by doing some uh, research and development. And of course, by Googling up on the web and uh, found some articles which helped me, you know, to in order to achieve this uh, uh, testing. 
so uh, i'll not take much of the time so uh, i'll uh, tell you about the scenario here what we are going to uh, do here uh, in the first scenario uh, let's take this scenario here we have an audio codes device here uh, which is hosted in a virtual machine and we have three call manager cluster call manager cluster a cluster b and cluster c and the ip address of call manager cluster e is dot 192.168.1.150 IP address of your call manager B is 192.168.1.155 and IP address of your call manager cluster C is 192.168.1.160 and the destination and the range that is hosted in uh, call manager A, B and C are respectively 10x series, 15x series and 16x series. So any calls coming for 10,000 series will hit call manager A. Any calls that are coming for call uh, 15,000 range that will hit a call manager B and any calls coming in for a call manager uh, 16,000 range should hit the uh, uh, call manager C uh, by seeing the range. So this is a um, diagram which I found uh, and this is very useful if you are uh, uh, if you're looking for a call routing to check, like uh, for example, in case of call manager, right? As we know, uh, let's say if you are trying to make an outbound call, what it checks for? It checks for your CSS partitions and then it checks like, uh, is it a registered number or the number what you have dialed is a route pattern. And if it is a route pattern, it will hit a route list and then route group and then the trunk and then the destination server. So likewise in audio codes, uh, there is something, uh, this is the call flow, what I can see is, uh, as a, let's say if uh, there is an incoming call from his, uh, from this particular server, which is your PBX system, right? Uh, the call will hit the SIP interface and then uh, the inbound lag will go flow like this. Uh, classification of IP group, IP file applied to inbound group. And then if any manipulation applied, and then you are routing the call between the IP groups from one IP group to another IP group. So this is where you do the routing. And then IP profile, outbound manipulation, if anything that is applied, and to the destination SIP interface, and then it goes to the destination. So this is how, um, uh, what I understand from the, you know, call flow here. Um, feel free to uh, share your comments, share feedback, like if uh, something that I have misunderstood, but this is what I can see, like this is how the call flow happens. So uh, let me get started. Uh, so I have uh, uh, done the basic uh, SIP trunking from this call manager clusters towards the audio code. So the audio code's IP is 192.168.1.180. And I have created three different uh, phones. So one phone is registered here, one phone is registered here, and one phone is registered here. So what uh, at the end of the uh, configuration, after the configuration is done, what we are going to do is we are going to uh, do the call routing between call manager A, B, and C using the audio codes. So let's log into the audio code server. So uh, this is the audio code server. So you can see uh, 192.168.1.180. At this moment, you see the HTTPS is uh, not secure because we have not applied any kind of certificate. So ideally, when you try to access the cert uh, audio codes, uh, maybe uh, it is always good to you know uh, use the uh, IP uh, the server or audio codes uh, URL using a SSL certificate and FQDN. So it is good to uh, it is always uh, you know good or maybe. I would say like if you are integrating your audio codes with the Microsoft Teams, you need to have uh, a certificate, you know, uh, issued from uh, Microsoft Teams certified, uh, you know, SSL certificates provider from where you need to get the certificate signed uh, for your audio codes. So one of the certificate uh, authority is uh, GoDaddy. So you can always purchase the SSL certificate from GoDaddy and get it signed uh, and install the certificate, uh, root certificate and the signed certificate in your audio codes device so that uh, whenever you are uh, um, I mean uh, trying to access the uh, uh, audio codes uh, using FTDN you don't hit uh, see this error HTTPS it'll give you a uh, it is it'll give you a padlock here so let's try to log in so I'm entering the default credential so right now if you see here uh, there is no configuration uh, configured at this moment so uh, what i'll go do, do is like uh, i'll go to the ip network so i'm not uh, again to reiterate like uh, i'm not going to take you to the entire configuration so i'm going to do the basic configuration what is required in order for the calls to work so uh, there could be you know uh, possible like uh, i might have not applied the best configuration which is recommended that that can be possible but at this moment my initial focus is to you know do the call routing 
routing maybe pro, uh, we can uh, think about the security once the call routing is uh, done uh, still as i said like i'm still new to audio codes and i'm still learning um, so as i said like i may be incorrect in some of the instances feel free to correct me if you know audio codes uh, better than uh, if i have done it uh, in this session okay so uh, this is the network view at this moment so the first and the foremost thing is uh, what we do is uh, we uh, create two different interface uh, if required so in our case uh, we have only lan interface but in a general scenario let's say if you are using ms teams and also if you are using uh, your lan network so in that case you will have two uh, interface maybe your lan interface and your wan interface so lan interface will route the calls towards your call manager and your wan interface will route the calls towards ms teams so in such cases you need to have a uh, two interface but at this moment if you see here uh, this is uh, there's only one interface created and if you need to create another one more interface you need to click on new and then uh, you know uh, let's say uh, put the interface as let's say WAN interface and then select the IP group here and then apply so once you create uh, a WAN interface uh, any LAN interface so that should reflect in IP interface here so let me uh, rename the, uh, this group Ethernet devices so that we don't get confused so that whenever we are doing the configuration. So I'll name it as LAN. So the interface which is index zero, I'll name it as LAN. The interface, interface which is uh, index one, I'll name it as WAN. So every time uh, whenever you save the configuration, right? So it'll ask you to, you, uh, it'll ask you to save here. So it's up to you if you want to save it at this moment because we have to do a lot of configuration so i'll not click click on save every now and then so i'll proceed with the configuration and once we are done with the configuration probably we can uh, you know save the configuration afterwards so this is the first and the foremost thing you create a lan and a wan interface uh, in our case uh, we don't need a wan interface so this wan interface we can remove it from here uh, so this is what just to show you like how to create a wan interface uh, so we don't need this at this moment now coming back to the IP interface. So this is the place where we are going to define the IP address of your audio codes website, audio codes uh, server. So the first and the foremost thing is uh, what you see here is OAMP. OAMP is uh, basically it stands for uh, your, uh, I mean, if you're trying to access this uh, web page using the URL of KDVN, OAMP should be assigned to that particular interface. For example, let's say uh, if uh, I have a WAN interface and uh, I don't want people uh, from outside of the you know organization to access my uh, audio codes URL uh, or audio codes FKDN from the outside of the network. Okay, so uh, sorry, I was being called by my son uh, to put his cycle down. So I could not complete uh, the recording in or that part. So let me uh, give you the example of what I was talking about. So let's say if you have a WAN interface and then you may want, not want the people from outside of your company or let's say outside of the network to be accessing the audio code speech uh, URL uh, from the public network, right? In that case, what you can do is like, uh, whenever you are uh, assigning a WAN interface, right? Uh, so as I said, like once you create the WAN interface in the Ethernet device, that will list here. So once you assign the WAN interface, so you can uh, always choose to have that as media and control uh, so that, you know, that URL will not be accessible uh, from uh, your public internet. Okay, so uh, it is always good to, uh, you know, disable the web access URL from the public interface or public network so that people cannot log in or see the login page from outside. Okay, next is your uh, primary DNS, secondary DNS, and here comes with your IP address. If you, whatever IP address you are going to assign for this audio codes device. So in our case, it is 191.6.1.180, and then this is what it is, and prefix length of 24. This means 255.255.255.0, and this is the default gateway, 192.168.1.1. Let's uh, assign it, uh, DNS as well, 192.168.1.1, sorry. Okay, uh, let's not get the second interface at this moment. Uh, so we are done with the IP interface configuration right now. 
now uh, what we need to do is uh, we need to uh, there are so many other settings as well uh, which we can go through um, but not in this video maybe uh, in the upcoming videos whatever we are going to record uh, if in case we are doing that so in the case of uh, tls context here right uh, i said like uh, you see this error right https in order to fix this error uh, so what you need to do is you need to uh, generate or uh, change the certificate here so what you can do is you can uh, you know uh, sign is a certificate signing request you can submit it here like what uh, certificate what is the CN name or uh, OU or company name, uh, X, etc., etc., all this to be. And you can also uh, define the subject uh, alternative name as well by uh, DNS or IPS as well. So once you're done with this, you can click on CSR, create CSR, and then you will get a CSR, which you have to sign it from the internal uh, certificate authority or maybe uh, external. It is always good to have this sign from the external authority. Uh, and it is specially required if you are doing a uh, integration with the teams, right? So as I said, like teams, um, I mean, Microsoft recommends some of their uh, service provider who does the SSL certificate uh, to be signed. And uh, I think those are the all a uh, few special uh, companies who can have this sign and that uh, audio coach will work with those companies itself uh, when you have them uh, get them signed with the SSL sign with those companies. So I'll not ta uh, talk about uh, MS Teams at this moment, but this is just an FYI. So once you uh, sign the certificate, you need to upload the certificate here. So once you upload the certificate, you need to make sure like uh, you also add the trusted root certificate. So once you add the trusted root certificate for which you have get it signed from the internal CA or maybe GoDaddy or any other service provider like that, you have to add those certificate from the root CA from those companies. And then once you do that, you save this configuration, you close the browser and you open the audio codes FKUDN, uh, I mean, open the um, browser and uh, enter the FKUDN of your audio codes. That should, you know, resolve uh, the audio codes FKUDN without any issues and uh, it uh, will not give you any HTTPS uh, error if in case you have signed it correctly. Okay, there are some firewall settings as well and other security settings if you, in case if you want to apply any firewall rules. But as uh, we are doing this LAN network and we are not touching this at this moment, but yes, it is always good to have the firewall rules defined. So let's go to signaling and media. So the in the signaling and media, the first and the foremost is like uh, the SRDs here. So uh, the SRDs are like basically logical representation of your entire uh, CPU's VoIP network uh, containing group of CPU users and servers. So uh, by default, uh, I think uh, this is what the default configuration is. So I'm not going to change any of this configuration here. So I'll keep it as default. The next uh, thing what we have to do is we have to uh, configure the SIP interface. So uh, SIP interface uh, is basically uh, represents a layer three network. Uh, um, it uh, is basically, uh, you know, uh, um, it is basically configuration where, like where it says like it is listening on these many ports. For example, if you see right now here, so uh, the default configuration is uh, this, right? And it is currently listening on 5060-5060 TCP and UDP and TLS port as well 5061. So um, if in case, let's say if you want to listen on only 5061 interface, you can make it zero UDP and TCP as well zero as well. So uh, this is basically uh, a configuration where uh, you have to uh, do all the layer three configuration here. Um, so uh, in our case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to define uh, the configuration as a SIP interface and make it LAN. And the network interface, as I say, like this is the LAN interface. If in case, if you get confused with what is this OMCs, so what we can do here is we can come here and rename this OMC to the LAN interface. Once I click on apply, now if I go to signaling and media, and then if I uh, drop down here, right now if you see as a LAN interface, the uh, OEMC we renamed it to LAN interface that has reflected here. So it is good to uh, rename this so that you don't get confused. Uh, next thing is I'll mention SIP interface LAN. 
and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to listen on UDP, TCP and TLS port. So this is uh, the default configuration. I, I'll still listen on all these ports uh, for now. And I'm not going to touch any of the other configuration at this moment. I'll click on apply. So we are done with this uh, SIP interface uh, for now. The next thing what we need to do is we need to uh, edit the media realms. So uh, media realm is like uh, defines a local uh, UDP port range like uh, uh, so what the port range uh, you are going to use uh, for the calls to work and then uh, I mean, uh, for the media traffic, and then uh, you have to define like how many number of uh, sessions you're going to handle, uh, or number of media sessions, like how many you are going to handle in this particular um, media realm. So let's define this as 100, and we'll keep the UDP range as 6,000 only. We are not going to touch any of these parameters again. So I'll click on apply here. So we have done the very basic configuration for the media realm. So uh, now the next thing is uh, we need to configure the proxy sets here so proxy uh, set is basically configuration which defines the actual uh, address or i mean ip address or fqdn of your sip uh, servers uh, for example it can be a pbx or it can be a sip proxy server uh, it can be uh, those servers where you are going to define the server information or it can be if in case you are using microsoft teams then you have to add those microsoft teams if uh, i mean url uh, what is defined by microsoft so uh, we have to create a three uh, proxy interface so as we have three call managers yes call manager a call manager b and call manager c so we have to define three proxy sets so i'll mention the proxy set is cocma proxy set and I'll choose the, I'll tie this to the LAN interface. And then I am not going to change any of this other configuration. I'll click on apply. Likewise, I'll uh, create two more proxy set, CUCMB proxy set. And again, I'll tie this to the LAN interface and I'll not touch any of this. And I'm going to create one more proxy set, CUCMC proxy set. <laughs> Now we have, uh, sorry, I have to tie the LAN interface. Yeah. So now as we have defined these three uh, proxy sets, now it's time to you know, define the FQDN or IP address of your call manager. So I'll go to uh, proxy set A call manager, CUCMA proxy set and click on proxy address zero items here and click on new. And then uh, here we need to define the IP address of your call manager. So for, for example, if you see here the drop down menu, right? So this uh, proxy set is used for uh, Microsoft Teams. So uh, this is uh, basically uh, you, when you are doing a team integration with the audio codes. So this is what you need to define uh, for the Teams to work. So, but in our case, we are not using Teams. So I'll define the call manager IP address. 1.150. I think the CUCME is 1.150. Yeah, CUCME is 1.150. And then uh, we have to define the port number 5060. So we are going to listen on 5060 and then define the transport type as UDP. So you can choose to have UDP, TCP, TLS, SCTP. So in case if you want to have uh, encrypted, so you can go for this. Otherwise, if you don't want uh, the calls to be, I um, mean, media traffic to be encrypted or other uh, uh, system to be encrypted, uh, uh, then in this in that case you can use uh, uh, UDP and TCP so I'll choose UDP I'll click on back now likewise I'll define the proxy address for CUCMB so CUCMB is 192.168.1.155 and the port number 5060 and then I'm going to define the transport type as UDP let's verify yeah, CUCMB is 1.155 and I'm going to use 50640 as the default port. Let's define the proxy settings for the uh, C. So click on new. 60, 5060, and again, the transport type is UDP. I, just for information in fin case, let's say if you want to do a or keep options being uh, uh, keep alive right so you can modify the options uh, keep alive message from here like you can uh, keep alive using options and then save the settings so that it'll keep on sending the options being uh, back to the call manager so uh, anyways we are not uh, doing that at this moment 
so as we have done with the um, i mean uh, proxy sets now it's time for us to you know configure uh, the ip profiles so we come here and then we have to create ip profiles first so click on new so now uh, you see here like uh, um, what we can do is we can name it a IP profile uh, CUCM and then uh, keep um, most of the things as default. We are not going to touch most of the things. And extension uh, coders group. So this is, uh, I'm going to explain you in a bit. So the, we are going to associate extension co uh, coder group uh, as a audio coder group. So where we are going to define the codex, what codex it is going to use for the calls. So I'll click on apply. So now uh, let's go to the coder group here. So as you see here in the audio coder group, so this was the uh, audio coder group association that we have done in the IP profile. So we are saying like uh, you allow this uh, codex. So we'll allow G711 A law and G711 U middle. So these two codecs, what we are going to apply at this moment. So once you are uh, done with this now, uh, now it's time to configure the IP uh, groups. But uh, before um, um, before we uh, go to the IP group, let me tell you about like what IP profiles are like what we have configured here. So IP uh, profile IP profile is uh, actually an optional configuration, but uh, it uh, defines a uh, you know various uh, range of call settings that you are going to uh, apply. For example, uh, if let's say you want to um, Keep the security mode as secure. Let's say if you want to have secure communication, so you can uh, make it secure. If you don't want to have a secure communication, you can make it not secure. And a few of the other things what you can do is if you want to uh, support uh, early media, or let's say if you want to, uh, for example, in case of MS Teams, right? Uh, MS Teams, uh, uh, if in case you are uh, using MS Teams, in some of the cases, uh, there are two scenarios in MS Teams uh, when you are integrating with uh, audio codes. Either uh, you, in one of the scenario, uh, I'm not able to recall at this moment, where you have to choose uh, ICE here, uh, ICE mode as light. Uh, in one of the scenario, I'm not able to recall the exact term, but yes, so this configuration has to be made uh, uh, when you're using MS Teams uh, in one of the scenario. And RTCP mode, if you want to uh, generate, uh, is uh, most of the times uh, selected as always, if in case if you're using Teams, in case if you want to generate uh, RTCP mode uh, as generate always. So there are a lot of other configuration what you can uh, play around, like for example, uh, let's say you want to um, do any of this manipulation here, like a remote invite supported or not supported, or maybe if you uh, want to uh, remote uh, refer mode, if you want to use, uh, how do you want to handle this call? A remote refer mode uh, is regular, is based on uh, handle locally, etc. So there are a lot of configuration which you can play around. So I'll not go uh, in detail at this moment, but this is what we can do uh, from the uh, you know configuration here. So now let's go uh, to the IP group. So by default, uh, there is a IP group uh, created, which is default.ip group configured here. So let's open this IP group here. And then once you open this IP group, uh, so what we need to do is uh, we need to uh, define the uh, groups here. So before we define uh, anything else, I think uh, let's create a dial plan first. So why are we creating a dial plan? So uh, the reason why we are uh, we are creating a dial plan is because let's say if you uh, want uh, audio codes to handle the calls based on the destination number, for example, let's say if 10.x series uh, range, if there is a call for 10x series range coming into the audio codes, how do you want to handle these calls? To which destination you want to send it to? So you can uh, you know make use of uh, uh, dial plan and send the calls accordingly. For example, let's say if uh, 10,000 uh, series range calls to 16,000 series range. Now, in what you're going to say is any calls that is coming for 16,000 in these audio codes, you send it to this interface, this call manager. Any calls that is coming for 10,000, you send it to this interface or uh, to this call manager. And any calls that's for 15,000, you send it to this particular call manager. 
and then uh, in order to do, do that so we have to come uh, here somewhere i think it's zip definition okay yeah zip definition and dial plan so just give it a dial plan name plan cucm i'll just mention a dial plan cucm apply so once you create a dial plan here you have to associate this dial plan to the ip groups but before that you have to define what ranges you are going to you know tackle here so let's say uh, CUCMA. So our CUCMA is hand, having the calls from 10x series range, right? So I'll mention 10xxx and I'll assign a tag when the calls is coming for uh, CUCMA, I'm going to assign it a tag as uh, CUCMA. So which we are going to, you know, look uh, further like why we are assigning a tag. So likewise, I'll create uh, for CUCMB. CUCMB is 15XXX and I'm going to assign a tag, tag as CUCMB. Now CUCMC 16XXX and assign it tag as CUCMC and click on save. So now as we have saved the configuration here for the dial plan, right? We have to call this dial plan in the IP groups that uh, we are uh, using at this moment. So in IP to IP, IP groups, what we are uh, defining is like uh, IP to IP routing, like uh, from what source to what destination you have to uh, basically route the calls uh, using the IP groups here. Uh, so uh, so let's see, uh, I'll name this as uh, CUCMA IP group. And then here, I'm going to associate the profile, uh, IP profile CUCM and media realm that we have uh, used. And then what we are defining here is we are defining the dial plan here. CUCM uh, uh, dial plan that we have just created in the previous scenario. And then we'll save this. So likewise, we'll create uh, two more IP groups. CUCM, uh, uh, I, well, I think like uh, uh, with single IP group, uh, the call should work. We don't need to define, oh yes, we don't need to define multiple IP groups, sorry. CUCMB IP group, and then in the proxy, we'll select as CUCMB proxy set, and then IP profile here, media realm here, and then what we are going to do is we are going to associate the dial plan that we have created just now. Other things you can play around with this. There are a lot of things to be played around, but we are not playing at this moment any of, with any of these things. So third is UCMC IP group, and then proxy set will use UCMC IP profile. We'll associate the IP profile and default realm. And last, we'll associate the dial plan. So as we are done with this uh, basic configuration with the IP group, right? Now it's time to define the call routing. Uh, so how do you want to handle the call routing uh, from this, uh, from one server to another server, right? So in order to do that, what we have to do is we have to come here in the SPC and select IP to IP routing. Now, what we need to define, we need to click on new. So what we are defining here is uh, uh, call routing here. CUCM A call routing. So what we are saying here is we have just given a name and now what we are saying is like uh, any calls that is coming from any of the source IP group, right? And so it can come from this IP group, this IP group or this IP group or basically we are matching this IP groups here, right? And then what we are saying is if you see the destination tag as CUCM A, Right. You remember the tag which we have created in the dial plan. So we are matching that particular tag. Then what you do is you uh, send the calls to IP group A. That means it is going to send the calls to IP group A, which will have the proxy set and that proxy set will have the IP address of your call manager uh, of call manager A and then the calls will be sent. Otherwise, if in case, if you don't want to uh, use IP group, you can always also select a destination address. Now, in case of destination address, you have to define the destination address of your call manager A and the port number of, uh, you know, the call manager A. 
and select the transport type. But as we have created IP groups, so I'll select IP group here and select the call manager A IP group. So likewise, we have to create two more uh, IP to IP routing. So CUCM B call routing. I'll leave everything as default and in this destination tag as CUCM B. And then what we are saying is uh, if any calls coming for CUCMB, you route it to destination IP group B. Okay. And then same goes with CUCMC call routing. And here, what we are saying is uh, we are saying the same thing. And then we are using the IP group using CUCMC IP group. Click on apply. Now, what we are going to do is uh, we are going to save this configuration. So the configuration is saved. So uh, let me register the soft phone uh, so that you know we can uh, make some test calls and see if how the calls are uh, going through. Uh, but in the meanwhile, uh, let me show you the configuration that I have put in for the trunk. So come here, trunk. So if you see here, uh, I've created some of the patterns. So uh, the, it is normal, like uh, how do you create normal uh, SIP trunks, right? It, it is going to be the same. But what I wanted to show you is uh, I'm sending any calls that is coming for 15X or 10.X, which is uh, from 160 call manager. What I'm saying is any call which is destination for this 15.X range or 10.X range, you send it to audio codes. So let me show you the route pattern here. So for example, you see here 10.x series or 15.x series, you are sending these calls to uh, audio codes and uh, using this trunk and this trunk has the IP address of your uh, audio codes device, which is uh, going to 5060 uh, port number. So let me register three soft phones so that you know I'll register it uh, to respective clusters. So that means one phone will be registered to A, one phone will be registered to B, one phone will be registered to C. So before I actually uh, register the phone, uh, I forgot to configure one of the uh, important parameter in uh, audio code. So let's go there and configure that. So what I'll do is I'll go back to uh, message manipulation here. And then here I need to add a new message manipulation. Uh, I'll tell you about the message manipulation uh, uh, in a bit. Uh, like what is this message manipulation about? So I'll copy this uh, uh, parameter here from this notepad and I'm going to paste this here. So Okay, so uh, what it is going to do is, uh, it is going to basically uh, look for the host part of the SIP request URA header and uh, replace it with the call manager IP address. So that is the reason uh, we are uh, using this uh, particular uh, message manipulation. And in the message manipulation set ID, you can put any number. So, and we have to call this particular rule in the IP groups by uh, calling this uh, number. So let's give it a number, let's say, uh, I'll give it a number as two. And then once we configure this, now we need to go to the IP groups and call this number number two in the outbound message manipulation set. So I'll call this number two. So basically whenever this uh, IP group is, uh, it hits this IP group, right? It'll call this uh, outbound message manipulation number two. And number two is basically nothing but this message manipulation set. So I'll hit this save. Now, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to register my phone uh, that's already uh, registered by now. And I'm going to use uh, and try to make calls. And let me open the diagram first. So this is the diagram. So what I'll do is I'll open three soft phones here. So one is a 10,001 phone. Next is your uh, uh, 15,000X phone. And next one is your 16,002 phones. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, make a call from uh, 10,001 phone uh, to uh, 15,000 series range or 16,000 series range and see if the call goes through. And likewise, once, it, once a call test has been, uh, once the call has been tested from call manager A to call manager B and C, 
then we will uh, test from uh, other sets, another set of phones, which is from call manager B to call manager A and C, and likewise from call manager C to call manager B and A. So let's first uh, try making a call from call manager A to call manager B and see if that works. So I'll make a call from 10,000 range to 15,000 range and see. So I made a call from 10,000 uh, one phone to 15,000 uh, phone and the call has been connected so uh, that means a call has uh, established from call manager a to call manager b so let's try uh, simulating one more call uh, from call manager a to call manager c and see if that works so i made a call from uh, i made a call from uh, call manager a to call manager c and the call has been established successfully so this means uh, the call has uh, landed from call manager A to call manager C. So I'll disconnect the call. Now what I'm going to do is I'll use this phone uh, call manager B and try to dial call manager A and see if that works. Okay. I just make a call and a call has been established from call manager B to call manager A. So let's try from call manager B to call manager C and see if the call comes in. Okay, so I made a call from call manager B to call manager C and this also worked. Now it's time to test from call manager C to call manager A and B. Let's try making a call to 10001. Okay, I was able to make call. So that worked. Let's try to 15001. This has also worked. So that means we have uh, successfully tested all the scenarios here. So by making a call from call manager A to B and C, B to A and C, and C to B and A. So um, I hope uh, you like this video and uh, let me know your feedback, comments, uh, like if anything that I have missed or uh, any best practices that I could have used or if uh, you have any suggestions um, that uh, you would like to share. Uh, so let me know your feedback on this video. Again, as I said, like let's uh, let, uh, just trying to reiterate, I'm not an expert in audio codes, so I'm just trying to learn um, by doing a R and D on uh, the lab. So again, uh, there can be many of the configuration which I might have not included. Uh, that configuration may make this more better and feasible. Okay. All right. So uh, I hope you like this video. Please uh, do uh, share and subscribe. Thank you for watching.